So this is the raw data that I got in watts versus time while I was data logging the car turning over. This earlier part here is actually the watts that's being used while the running headlights are on as the ignition is on. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on a 15 second window while the motor was cranking so it's easier to analyze. So starting at the 10 second mark on the previous graph to the 25 second mark, you can see that this is actually the watts that the running lights, the computer in the car, the ignition, and the starter, everything is using in order to turn the car motor over. Now technically if I want to find the joules that's required, the correct way would be to actually connect all of the points over time and do an integration of every one of them in order to find the area under the curve. Being that this is a ballpark calculation to get us in the right place, what I'm going to do is take and assume that I have a constant load, electrical load, at this 2100. So I have 2100 watts that are actually being pulled throughout the whole time. Doing this, you technically don't need to integrate. You can actually just take and look at it as 15 seconds on the bottom and 2100 on the height and take a rectangle and you can actually just figure out the area of that rectangle. But I did put together the integration equations here. So our formula is going to be this y is equal to 2100. We take and integrate it with respect to time in between the area of 25 seconds and 10 seconds down here. So the end result is that we have 31,500 joules of power that is actually going to be required to turn the motor over for those 15 seconds. So now that we know the amount of power that's required, we can start looking at what kind of capacitor bank will be necessary to do this. The formula for figuring out the joules of stored energy in a capacitor is joules is equal to C times V squared divided by 2. C is the capacitance of the bank in ferrets, V is the voltage that the capacitor is charged to, and for this example I'm going to try to run it through with a 500 ferret capacitor bank. Once you start getting a whole lot larger than that, I'm going to start running into issues of how to actually fit them into the replace of the battery. Um, so we'll see how it goes. An important thing when looking at the amount of power your capacitor holds to what you actually need is you can get some very skewed results because I can't use all the power in the capacitor because I can't turn the starter over at say 2 volts and I can't get the engine to start once it gets down to too low a voltage. That's why I took the data that I got when I was turning the engine over and I actually looked at while it was turning over with a good battery and in a good start condition, the battery never dropped below 10.25 volts. I'm going to use this as a baseline so that at the end of that 15 second window, ideally this will be turning over no slower than what it would be with the battery. So to calculate that, the first thing I'm doing is I'm calculating the joules that cannot be used in the capacitor bank. That anything below 10.25 volts really isn't helpful to what I'm trying to do. So we take our formula here and we actually put in our 500 ferrets because that's the size of our bank and we're going to put in 10.25 volts for our voltage. And figuring this out, we get 26,265 joules. That means that basically, assuming that I don't want the engine to turn over slower than it did with the battery, this is the amount of energy I'm storing but can never be used in the capacitor. Once we have the amount of energy that cannot be used in the capacitor, it becomes very simple. We're going to take and see what I have to charge that capacitor to in order to have my 31,500 joules available in order to be able to use that. 
So we take the formula for the capacitance in the capacitor and we're solving for the voltage that I will need to charge this bank to in order to have that 31,500 joules available before it gets down to the 10.25 volts which would show the 26,265 joules that will be remaining in the capacitor. So our maximum capacitance charged is here and our cutoff point where we no longer can use it is here. And all we do is use algebra and basically solve for V and we end up with 15.2 volts. This in itself will cause a very large problem because the alternator, I can guarantee you, I haven't measured it yet, but does not output 15.2 volts. It's probably going to be, my guess, in the low 14s, possibly high 13s, depending on the design of that car. So essentially, I would either need to go back and figure in for a larger capacitor bank than 500 farads, or I would need to step up the voltage to it and assume that I won't lose too much voltage in between the time the car is sitting there or I'm gonna to have to look into using capacitors with the battery in parallel in order to use the capacitors to buffer it and just be able to downsize the battery. I haven't decided which way I'm gonna to wanna to go with this or if I'm just going to use a different vehicle and start over on a different project. Um, 500 pairs of capacitance is gonna end up costing somewhere between three hundred and probably four hundred dollars I would guess by the time I get my hands on that many capacitors in that size so we will see what I decide thank you very much for watching hopefully this was interesting if you see any mistakes in my calculations please let me know